If in your office, you as an intellectual worker were supplied with a computer display backed up by a computer that was alive for you all day and was instantly responsible, responsive, <laughs> instantly responsive to every action you had, how much value could you derive from that? San Francisco, 1968. A computer conference featuring a young scientist named Doug Engelbart. His radical ideas about interactive media had not yet sparked the technological revolution that has transformed the way we live and work. We got our sponsor's approval of the sort of, I don't think you'd really better tell me what you're, you're going to do, but it sounds like a great idea, but if it fails, I'm going to have to say I didn't know about it because spending government research money to put on a show like that really isn't in your statement of work. So we took the gamble. There was good reason to be skeptical. The images on the huge screen were powered by a mainframe 25 miles away with a capacity of just 192 kilobytes. Though the crowd gave Doug Engelbart a standing ovation that day, there was no rush to embrace his prophetic visions. I was constantly thinking about what it would be like to interact with a computer on a screen. And one of the basic challenges at the time would be how do you tell the computer what object on a screen you want it to do something about. There are various ways to tell it what you want to do about, but how do you tell it what to do it to? So in 1963, he designed and later patented a device called an XY position indicator for a display system, more commonly known as a mouse. That alone would secure his place in the history of technology, but the list of his other inventions is staggering. Multiple window screen displays, hypermedia, groupware, email systems, interactive computer conferencing, online publishing, outline processing. In the 1970s, he even created the Network Information Center for ARPANET, a precursor to the modern internet. Engelbart has always been guided by the principle that technology should augment, not replace human intelligence, and that mind and machine should work together. Don't get trapped into this, what you see is what you get, which was just assuming that what you're doing with the computer is preparing something for paper. Since think of the computer as the medium you may as well leave it in and transport it and view it and read it, etc. And then you have so much more freedom. Ever the pioneer, Engelbart is still looking forward. Sometimes people ask me sort of how I feel about <laughs> what the inventions have done for the world. And, and one of the problems I have internally for facing that is I still see so much more to be done that uh, what I have done already seems like, well, just getting ready for that. And it's hard to turn and give that much focus. In my past trail, I keep thinking so much about what's ahead and what yet is to be done. Along with his daughters, Christina and Diana, Dr. Engelbart is now devoting his energies to an organization called the Bootstrap Institute, which teaches companies how to maximize their collective IQs through continuous improvement. As he pursues his revolutionary work, he hopes that others will follow his example. I would really, really enjoy the feeling that uh, other people who are struggling and having dreams that are bigger than they are, et cetera, uh, would say, well, if that country kid could do it, let me keep slogging away. Um, that that would be a good feeling for me, and I, I think it could have that kind of impact. And so I'd be happy to sort of spread the feeling to, to other people.